thank you everyone for coming. That, that was half my spiel you just took. <laughs> what am I gonna say now? Thank you everyone for coming and joining us today. This session is the workshop or the panel entitled Empowering Women in Fandom. So if you're in the wrong room, you still have a few minutes to leave and find the right room. What does it mean to be a woman in fandom? Our panelists here, four ladies, will delve into the growing commercial and cultural influence of the female geek. So the first thing I did was I emailed the whole group and asked them to send me your bios, and I started reading them and I realized half of the bios go way over my head. So I thought, why don't we start by having them give you their own bios, and that way you'll already get to know them. So we're going to have them introduce themselves, give themselves uh, their bios to you, then I will ask each of them uh, three questions in sequence and have them answer the way they feel. And just so that you know, we will finish with a 10 minute Q&A. So keep your ears peeled if you hear something interesting and make sure you put it into a question. And at uh, 10 minutes before finishing, we'll have a 10 minute Q&A that you can ask them. So we have four ladies here today. We have Rain Giorgio on your left. Next to her is Andrea Duma. Next to Andrea is Monica Willard. And on your far right is Deborah Hicks. So why don't we start by asking Rain her bio. Uh, I'm Rain Giorgio, like Terry said, and I'm the founder of MyNerdBest.com. So we just launched in January and it's the first um, safe, inclusive social media site just for fandom. So you can find us at My Nerd Nest, and I created My Nerd Nest with um, young women in mind, and it's expanded to be for everyone for all ages, and it really focuses on being um, inclusive and safe, um, and also I think it's a lot of fun and it's really exciting. It focuses on the power of transformative fandom as opposed to curative fandom. So the greatness of everything that you as fans create and that you put out into the world. Um, we just think that that's so exciting. So that's what we aim to do. I'm also a university student. Um, I live in Denver uh, and I go to the University of Denver and I'll graduate this fall with a degree in business. I'm Andrea. I just go by A on my cosplay page. I'm a cosplayer from Vancouver and I'm with Forever Dreaming Cosplay. We do commissions and we do body positivity work in Vancouver where we go around to cons and talk about body positivity and how you can be what you want as long as you're happy in the fandom and encourage people to really cosplay what they love and I do that. I've been cosplaying for three years. I have a fashion degree under my belt. Um, that was a few years ago. I don't remember how long that was. Um, but yeah, no, I transferred into cosplay and costume in Hi, I'm Monica. I own a wear store here in town where we sell um, geeky collectibles, fairies, skulls, um, gothic things. Um, I also have a degree in marketing and merchandising and communication studies from the UC. And I'm also the admin of the Calgary Steampunk Facebook page. Uh, so I'm Deborah Hicks, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Alberta. Um, my dissertation research looks at the intersections of information and identity. Uh, I particularly look at the professional identity of librarians, which I used to be in a former life. Um, I sort of come to this in a slightly different way. My sort of fandom plays with at the edges of my work, not sort of the center of it, I guess. Uh, I've used uh, Buffy in particular, which is where the heart of my fandom lies, uh, to study things like information-seeking depictions in popular culture. I've looked at depictions of uh, the principalship, so school principals, in shows like Buffy and Veronica Mars. Uh, and I've just sort of used it as a way to explore my scholarship in new and different ways. Great, thank you ladies. Well, why don't we start off by asking the very first question and we'll ask Rain to answer that first question and each of you can go in sequence and then maybe you can uh, add to one another's uh, uh, answers. Now the first question we have that, that you wrote up that you thought would be significant to ask is, what do you think are the unique things that women contribute to fandom? So I think that women obviously are a growing, powerful cultural influence and what's really neat in the past few years is that women have gone beyond consumption and into creation. 
which is um, really the first time that this has happened in history, which is absolutely incredible and blows my mind. So what women have done is they've become such experts in fandom, they've become such consumers of the content, that now that they have this powerful voice that's being listened to, and so they have all of these opinions and things that they like to see, and more and more popular media is listening to the what um, women in fandom want, which is really exciting. Because in the past, fandom has been a very male-dominated um, area, and now it's really more equal, and that's fantastic. And so there's really been an underrepresentation of women in fandom, and now we're seeing more and more of it. And we've done a lot of research at NerdNest actually about the way that women consume content. And what is different about women and men is that men tend to be more curative. So think of your typical geek guy. Um, he's a collector. Whereas women um, also are collectors, but they're really more creators. They're really more um, interested in what they have to offer. And so I think that that's great. Um, because it's really, it really helped as part of what creates fandom is all the unique things that each individual has to offer from their own perspective and point of view. Gosh, I got one question now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people, women have to offer in fandom. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like women are, like she said, very powerful. We're very gung ho in what we want to do. And when we love something, we love something passionately. And I feel like our passion is actually helping broaden and make our fandom almost spread. So it's become such a mainstream culture now where we see it everywhere. We see it in movies, we see it on Broadway, like we just see it everywhere. In every media, there is some sort of fandom now. And women, the passion that women and men carry just make it spread so much more. Women, I find, bring almost, bring, I don't know how to phrase this, I'm trying to phrase something. Uh, it brings almost like your entire family. It's not just like the men going to, to the con now. It's you see the kids, the women. This, it, as a whole, it's becoming such a broad community because women are just wanting to be there. We want to go see these things. And it's creating such, I feel like, almost a family between the community and it's making it grow. So I feel women have, they bring such a passion and a positivity to them. <laughs> well, I was thinking back when you invited me on this panel, I was thinking back to uh, when I got involved in fandom and I can't pinpoint an exact time, it goes back to childhood. I was writing a story in the third grade and my parents got called in because it, the teachers thought it was inappropriate. Um, we were learning about bread. And um, so we learned how grain is grown and then milled and you make bread and then in another class we were asked to write a story about bread. So everybody in the class wrote about the olden days and you baked bread and your grandmas. And I wrote about a bread monster who <laughs> got electrified. The yeast went out of control and there was an electrical storm and the bread monster got electrified and ran amok in the town. And my parents were called in, because apparently this was inappropriate. And I was baffled, I was astonished, I was, how is this not appropriate? And I grew up that way, where what I wanted to see, what I liked, didn't exist. There were no, there was no Harry Potter, there was no Hermione, there was, there was nothing like that growing up, I'm not saying my age, but there wasn't at the time. <laughs> And I, find, and I found that came into being about the time that I went to university. About that time that women were like writing about what they wanted to see. And I'm really enjoying that now that uh, we have a different perspective. There, there, there's stuff that we want, so we express it. And it's, there's a need for it. There's people want it. If they ask J.K. Rowling, she's... She's rolling in the dough, I'm telling you, now's the time. Uh, so like a lot of academics, when I was asked to be on the panel, the first thing I did was go and find every article and book and anything I could do to read about this so I could become, become very well informed. And so I come with this slightly academic, well, there's nothing truly unique about women. All of these things apply to men and women equally, sort of lovely academic, uh, you know, fence-sitting position. 
But I think what um, is particularly unique to women in the fandom, at least according to the research, is sort of how women treat the fandom. They use it as a way, there's a lot of research, especially online research, where women go onto these fan boards or they create blogs and they come together and they use whatever the object of their fandom is as a way to explore uh, their life outside of that fandom. And so one classic example, and really moving piece of a, a scholarship that I read was about the Xena fan boards. Now, they're kind of a little out of date now, but this was, this was recent re research, and these are active fan boards where women are still going on and still supporting themselves as they discover their sexuality. They're just, they've, there are stories about women helping each other out of abusive relationships. And it's sort of, that's the, what I think is particularly unique to women, is that they take the fandom and they launch it out into their, their lives, into their communities, and they build upon what they love in terms of storytelling and make it part of their lives. And they explore not only their own identities, but the identities of the women around them. So that's what I think is particularly unique. Good, good, good. Uh, second question is um, about uh, sexism. How can we combat casual sexism in a positive way? Well, I think that, um, I think the reason that question is worded that way is because there is the obvious, um, really overt sexism that is terrible and obviously I think that the only way to combat that is with a little love and a little compassion and a little understanding. But um, what's, I think, more prevalent is um, some discrimination that I think people don't even realize is happening. Um, like going into a comic book store and being asked, oh, are you shopping for your boyfriend? <laughs> um, and the answer, of course, is no, I've loved comics since I was a little kid. I dressed up as Spider-Man princess for Halloween. Um, so I think that the best way that we can help other people is with all the same love that I see in fandom. The best thing about fandom, I think, is that it's the most inclusive place I've ever been. And we know, as members of fandom, that the reason that our heroes are so special is because they're unique, because they have something about them that makes them different. And there's no way that, as members of fandom, we can love our characters for that reason and then not see the same in other people. And so I think that just bringing that identity and that love of fandom to real life, that's what makes our community a better place. And that's what helps, honestly, I believe, as cheesy as it sounds, change the world. How do I follow that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, gosh. Um, sexism for me, like, I've walked into comic stories and I'm like, oh my god, there's this and this. Like, so does your boyfriend watch this stuff? I'm like, I get my boyfriend into this stuff. <laughs> he didn't want to come here today. And it's like, I get stared at, and it's just like, really hard. I think I experienced the most sexism when I was in fashion design school, and take it back there, because we had a gaming um, program in our fashion, in the school I went to, and it was literally one side gamers, one side fashion students, and our fashion had a glass wall when you walked into the school and all the gamers would stare into us and if we looked at them, they would look away. <laughs> and it's just like, hard. And I had some few girls that, that I knew that were over in the game program and they were just really cool. And it's just heartbreaking to feel that we can't be a part of something that's so broad. What's so different? There's no difference between if you're a guy and a girl. So when I see sexism, it's just really hard for me, especially when I do cosplay. I have girls come in and they really want to do guy characters. They go, oh, but some of the guys get really mad. Like, why? Like, oh, you're supposed to be a guy. Why are you making him sexy? It's like, I love this character too. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Example, <laughs> she looks amazing. <laughs> um, but, and then I have guys come in and go, I want to dress as a girl. And I'm like, that's great. And then they get ripped into, and it's just like, why is everyone so harsh about our genders? We all love the same thing, and that love shouldn't cause hate. I have been called a fake geek girls because they don't play some video games. And then I'm just like, well, I just don't like that one. How does that make me not geeky? Like, I grew up trying to swing on willow tree branches, trying to be Spider-Man. I hurt myself. <laughs> They're not very strong. <laughs> um, so I feel like 
sexism in the fandom really just needs to be ignored because and dealt with not not ignored but almost dealt with in the why does it matter that I'm this way? Why does it matter you're this way? I love this, you love this. We just have to get to a point where everyone realizes we support each other. We come to these things to support each other. You're supporting artists, you're supporting game designers, you're supporting TV shows that have all different sex in them, women and men. So it's just really, I guess, comes down, like she said, just loving each other and loving what we do because we're here because we love the same thing. It shouldn't matter about our gender, really. Yeah. <laughs> Thank I firmly believe um, that you teach people how to treat you. That um, the way you act, the way you present yourself, the way you hold yourself tells the world who you are. Um, I'm not a very confident person, actually. I'm actually quiet and meek, but I take the line from Doctor Who and I walk in, I am the oncoming storm. Um, I take a wide stance, I put my arms wide, I'm like, yeah! And then I can go out there and I can do it. I run a business where I sell um, goth skulls and I sell fairies and I sell men's clothes and women's corsets and I sell um, replica weapons of Colt 45s and Henry rifles and I, I do it's a very rare occasion where I have a guy come up and they don't expect me to know what I'm talking about because I know what I'm talking about when it comes to the replica weapons and everything else. And it's a very rare occasion when I, I get, oh, well, you wouldn't know about that because you're a girl, but I pick, I pick up that weapon. I know how to hold it. I've learned how to hold it how to grip it, and, and people see that. They see me project this confidence, and I'm not questioned about my knowledge, if I'm a girl or my guy, can I do all this? So I can wear a corset and still hoist a rifle and look awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just came from the Haley Atwell panel, because I thought that, what a better way to sort of prepare for this than to you know sit there with this really wonderful woman. And she said something, I think that addresses this really quite nicely, and it's kind of how I would address it as well, which is the best way to combat this stuff is to be smart, is to be witty, is to prepare yourself for it. And I think this goes for both men and women. It's just sort of understanding what it is that we're seeing, thinking about it. Uh, if we have an instinct, if we see something and we're like, oh, I feel bad about that, figuring out why you have that instinct and thinking it through so that it's not just a reaction, it's a smart, intelligent reaction. Um, and that it's also not paying the ridiculousness, which we've heard a little bit of, any mind. It's just ridiculousness and just sort of moving on and, uh, and being smart about it. So it's, I guess it's sort of a, I don't know, it's sort of a non-answer, because it's just like, be you. But like, be the smartest, brightest, best version of yourself. <laughs> that combats a lot of things. Also, I, I, I can't help but think that uh, when I was growing up, I don't remember any women superheroes, but today th there are a, a lot more women superheroes taking those roles, so that certainly has to help the women part of it, right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also it's been well known to the marketing world that women determine the bulk of the household spending, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it sounds like it's still a bit of an uphill battle. It's getting easier every day. It's definitely uphill. I feel like a lot of people will say, oh, there's still a lot of sexism. And there is, but at the same time, it's gone a lot down the past few years from since I started cosplaying. Like my first year, I experienced it really bad, and then now it's just a lot more positive. Good. What about uh, now the best part? What What do you think the best part is of being a, a woman in fandom? I actually um, do a talk at Nerd Night, and which you should all go to. There's a local Nerd Night in Calgary, and um, it's about who is the female geek, who is the modern geek woman, and there's a lot of different aspects to that. Like Deborah was saying, 
we're smart. We know what we like and we know everything about it. And I think that is so excellent. And we're, we're sexy too. Um, geek women uh, are sexually empowered like they've never been before, which is pretty exciting because there's been um, some sexual objectification in the past of women. Like you can look at you know, any dozen comic book hero outfits for a woman about 20 years ago, and I think you'll see you know, maybe more lace and string and latex than anything that would you know, be blocking a punch. And so um, you look and see today, like the current Wonder Woman, she's got pants on. And I think that's a little bit better for kicking somebody in the chest. And fighting bad guys, I think, got a little bit easier for Wonder Woman. And we're seeing more women in the directing field. We're seeing more women represented well in comics. We're seeing a greater diversity. We're seeing um, basically a wider representation. More than ever, it's easier to be a woman of any identity and look into the things we love and say, hey, that's me. And that is part of what's great about being in fandom, is this sense of identity. And I think that today it's easier than ever before to form that strong identity, um, both as a fan and then looking at deeper into fandom and finding people who represent you. Um, so. I think that would definitely be part of it. Um, what's the <coughs> goal being a women fan right now? I think because it's become a lot more open and people are becoming a lot more open-minded to that, you know what, we grew up playing video games too, guys, and stuff like that. So I feel like being a woman fan now is the best time because everyone's super open about it. Everyone knows that there's a ton of super female superheroes, like for me, the new, one of the new X-Men that came out was just all women, the storm was leading them, and it was just an all women X-Men comic, and it was awesome, and like now, there's spider brand and stuff like that, out of the spider universe, and it's just, all, you see all these different things being pulled that are becoming super popular, and it revolves around women, and a lot of the outfits are being changed, and a lot of them being updated, and there's no random leotards that you don't know how they stay on your body. <laughs> <laughs> I think we enjoy that as cosplay. <laughs> and it's seeing things being upgraded and seeing things become more positive is one of the reasons why it's so great to be a woman right now because the positivity in the fandom is just increasing every day. You see new stuff coming out, women trying new things in it, you know. You're seeing a lot more women being in charge of movies, like she said, and being in the industry, you know, a lot more female, like iZombie. And watch that it's a new woman in an interesting role. And nice to see those roles being allowed for women to get in and those being made. And like one woman finally getting a movie, seeing a strong female is just fantastic. And it's just such an open minded community and it's getting more positive. So I feel like that's really why it's really great to be a woman right now, enjoying your fandom. Uh, my answer is uh, one word to try. Sit back again when you invited me. I was thinking, oh, what did I say? And I'm thinking back. I grew up in a small town, and basically I was a tribe of one. There was me. I listened to different music than other people did. I wanted to dress differently than other people did. Um, I hung out with the metalheads because it was close enough <laughs> to what I liked. And then I went, I came to the big city, Calgary, and I went to a party at the UC, and there were people dressed the way I dressed, and there were people whose music I listened to. And then further along, I found people who dressed in costumes, and they didn't like it. And so I find more and more I'm finding my tribe, my people. So I come to places like this, and the women, we just look at each other like, yeah! There's an instant connection. You're my tribe. <laughs> and to sort of build on that, I think it's also a time, uh, Rain mentioned right at the beginning that uh, sort of what she thought distinguished female fans from uh, regular fans is this ability to create. Women tend to, we, we see our fandoms and we want to create. Well, now we have the internet. And you can, you know, go to all sorts of fan fiction forums. You can, uh, you know, 
vidding. You can create these videos. You can you can just you know I I was following one Twitter uh, stream that was all sort of like basically live tweeting Buffy episodes from Buffy's perspective, and like it was just sort of there's this opportunity to partake and to uh, become part of the fandom in a way that you might not have when say you know pre-internet days when your fan fiction was mailed to you, uh, <laughs> which I can't even wrap my head around. <laughs> There are subscriptions for fan mail? Yeah. Apparently, oh. I yeah, yeah, apparently that's how that's how it started. Um, you know, magazines and things like that, this is where it started. And I think it's just much easier now. This is why it's the best time to be any kind of fan. It's just much easier now to partake. And maybe it's a bit more mainstream. It's a little less, you know, there were, would have been times when people were like, you're going to like, you're going to the expo. And now it's like, oh, you're going to the expo. You met Neil Patrick Harris? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how are you? <laughs> I, I managed to say, how are you? I have a hard time speaking in front of good-looking people. So, <laughs> I was very proud of myself, especially for women. But that's a different story. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's part of what makes it this the best time, is that there is these opportunities for to go outside of just watching and just um, passively participating and actively participating. I think we can all agree that the internet may be one of the best parts of being in the fandom. <laughs> yeah. um, what's also really interesting about right now, there's a, an article in NPR, and it was about um, women in, in apps. And so women are huge consumers of, of gaming apps. And there was a young girl, about 12, and she was really upset that you had to unlock the female characters, that your starting character was male, and then you had to either pay money or spend a lot of time on the game to unlock a female character. And so she did a survey of 100 gaming apps, and she found that more than 70 either didn't have a female character or um, you had to pay for the female character or unlock her. And so she wrote to every single app, and she asked why. And she even wrote to Disney, which is you know, a huge proponent of, of princesses, and we see you know, Anna and Elsa saving each other. So you'd think that even in this one particular Disney app, you would have a woman character, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And um, in Temple Run, it was the same thing. You had to unlock the, the female character. And so now, actually, in Temple Run, you are able to start out with the female character as well, thanks to this 12-year-old girl who, who wrote to them, which I think is really great. Um, there's also, again, that, that power of the internet, of being able to be um, someone who's, who's not necessarily um, very powerful, um, you might think, in terms of their influence, but really, now, with the internet, we have the same power that media has always had, and we have the ability to influence that content and then um, to forge our own path. Internet, good place and scary place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just all those games. Games. Yeah. How, how scary? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that rule what? That's anything that's on the exists on the internet? There we go. <laughs> that's rule 34. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. Internet rule 34 is if it exists, it yeah. exists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it also offers opportunities in the same way that, oh, yes. like, some of the, you know, uh, I, I don't, you know, there's things like Gamergate are getting together on and attacking women. I think it's offering women and their allies, and I, you know, I, I really sort of want to stress the ally part of that, to come together as well. It's not just, it's, it's not just sort of the negative, it's, it, it can be counteracted in, in, in an equally uh, positive way to the negative negativity of those kinds of things. I'm not one particular nasty group. There's lots of nasty groups. <laughs> so. yeah, no, it's definitely a good way to find all the women that enjoy the stuff you do. Like, I am obsessed with this one game, and the moment I find a girl in light, I'm like, hey, <laughs> And it's the best connection when you just connect to other people on stuff like that, going, no, it's great to meet other girls that like that stuff. So it's a great opportunity on the internet. Good. Does anyone have any uh, questions up till now? That they'd like to ask? Oh, I have one thing before people start asking yes, questions. Um, please. We had a panelist, Jamie Cordero. She's from Espionage Comics, and she couldn't be here today. And so, as an apology, she actually gave us some stuff to give away. And so, if you ask a question, you 
can get a prize. And so just come see me uh, after, and I will hook you up. <coughs> I can probably just stand and right here. Okay. Um, so I wrote it down because I'm nervous. Um, thank you. That was a really great panel. It was nice to see all you guys up there. Um, so, Rain, I really enjoyed your assertion that women in fandom tend to create uh, and that men are often more curative, as you said. Um, I feel like shows like The Big Bang Theory now have made the curative element of fandom way more mainstream and more normative. So it's kind of become normal now to be a geek insofar as you like things that men do, in a sense. Um, so even the female geeks on the show, I found, for the most part, are, are geeks insofar as they're in like science. They're not really representing the female fandom that people in this room might know of. Um, for instance, fan fiction, right? Uh, a lot of women in real life who are in fandom pursue things like fan fiction or cosplay, which are not necessarily male-dominated areas. They're often still stigmatized and looked down on mainstream society, right? Um, so I just wanted to ask, do you see the creative side of fandom, so things maybe like fan fiction, um, becoming more socially acceptable in mainstream media? And do you see that change happening within the next like five, ten years? I think in the next five to ten years, we will see it be as normal as curative fandom. Right now, uh, I think the mainstream media still is getting used to the idea. Um, if you've watched uh, maybe the Avengers um, when they were on, was it was it Jimmy Fallon? Um, he actually showed them Science Bros um, fan art, and it was kind of in a teasing way, like um, look at this silly fan art. But at the same time, it's great because there was this recognition that it exists, and all of a sudden it was brought into the mainstream light. And I think people used to sort of laugh at the idea of, oh, we collect comics or action figures. And now people see the value in that. And we see shows, like you said, like The Big Bang Theory, where that's glorified. And I don't think it's too far off or too big of a step to say that it's not too long until people recognize and understand that there are these fan fictions that are 200,000 plus words, which are you know, more than three times the length of the average novel. Fifty shades of gray. <laughs> yeah, everyone doesn't know, but... Started out as fan fiction. Mm -hmm. It is well known that it started as fan fiction too, right? So I think that would be part of that. Not that I'm necessarily endorsing poorly written literature. So I didn't tell. It's just saying that fan fiction is making its way, not not necessarily the best, but it's making its way. I'm not going to stand up, I'm usually pretty loud. Um, um, it is, because I'm hearing a lot of dialogues about how women are becoming sort of as geeky as the guys. But what if, is, that, is there a risk there then of alienating women who maybe aren't quite as geeky as the guys, or and maybe they're not as much into that, in, into it, like that's gung-ho as some groups are? Um, I would say no. I mean, we do have some women that are like, oh my god, yes, 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 and they run around going, I know all of this, and then we have some women that go, I enjoy this. I definitely feel like even the women that are more on the outskirts don't enjoy it like a little bit, they're not so gung-ho. Um, I feel like it's not alienating them at all because it's very much them realizing that I could become gung-ho, but it's also okay for me to enjoy what I enjoy. I don't need to go there. It's it's still quite open for me to enjoy just a little bit and kind of stay back to where they enjoy it, so that's my question. I read a really interesting article last night about how uh, fans of all genders uh, internalize negative fan stereotypes and apply them to others, that it's not something that is just from outside coming in, it's, it's inside going out. And so I, it, it could be that there is something, but I do hope that sort of the, the openness in the community and the, ideally the creativity, because it's really kind of part and parcel to all of this. You just go to, you know, very artist alley, those are clearly people who are embracing their inner nerd and geek um, and seeing different outlets for it. So yeah, again, it goes back to just being smart and thinking about your own things. So when, you, when you see yourself like, oh, total fangirl behavior, like sort of stopping yourself from thinking that, <laughs> just a little bit, you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That was a pejorative, right? So, yeah. So earlier you were talking about how um, about how the need to be really confident in what we know and what we what we love in order to be taken seriously, but that's not always possible. We're not always confident in what 
you know, sometimes we're just learning about things. So, but that doesn't mean that we should not be taken seriously, right? So I'm just wondering what you think the responsibility of men is in all this, because of course we are responsible for, you know, our empowerment and our confidence that should, that is great that, that comes from us, but where do the men fall, do you think, in terms of um, accepting women more into, into family and helping make these safe spaces for women? Knowing the men that I know, you attract um, the right people with the right attitude. I can I know dozens, like dozens of guys who are the most accepting, wonderful people you'd ever meet. Because I will accept nothing less. I'm just uh, yeah. It's it's kind of a crazy thing to say, but. Um, I'm, I'm expecting a certain level of, and I turn off a lot of guys, guys. <laughs> but, uh, and they just, we're not friends, we don't hang out, that's fine, that's cool, but you find your people by being yourself, even if you're a, a quiet, I know some lovely, quiet little wallflowers who, in their group, they are the queen of, I'm not going to swear, but um, men, their responsibility is to also just be themselves. They're going to get what they're going to get. If they're open and they're accepting, they're going to get great rewards. And if, and if they're not, it's like anywhere you go in life. I don't know if that helps. I think it's also incumbent on men to be good allies. So uh, listening when women say, I find this offensive, uh, letting women have a, an opportunity to speak. Uh, there's a lot of men in this audience, it was great, which I think is wonderful. And I think this is actually part of that activity, is sort of being that good ally. Um, and it's uh, not, not replacing women's voices when they're trying to talk, not saying, oh, I can say that better for you. Like not doing that, it's letting the women talk. It's part of it. Another way that men can know help things out is if you see someone being attacked in public because I've seen cosplayers and girls buying stuff or vendors and some people are so terribly rude that come to these things and I've seen little snippets of stuff being said instead of just kind of like looking to see if someone's talking speak up because we are all fans so when you let something like that go by it's gonna keep happening and you could, that person's con experience could be ruined for the rest of their lives and could never want to enjoy their fandom again. And that's horrible. So men, women alike, their jobs is to defend the people that love what they love. So our fandom can keep growing and keep being awesome. We have one question here. We have uh, seven minutes left. Uh, it would be nice if I can get everyone's question in. <laughs> Did you have a question? Uh, it was just a comment that men should actively call out other men when yes. you see so. Okay, Question. Hello, I'm a small child. Um, <laughs> what? Is that not how you're supposed to introduce yourself to your pro results? Um, so we mentioned here that women in fandom tend to create. Um, I'd like to bring up the topic of web comics, and I'm not talking things like Homestuck with mass population of fans. I'm talking th smaller things like Ava's Demon, who are run by young women trying to get their start in comics. Now, with that, in web comics, how am I going to word this? Um, in web comics, there are often more female main characters I see, and there's better representation. Recently, someone who I follow on the internet, um, not soccer, um, they started a web comic that I have seen is almost entirely filled with female characters, and particularly people of color, and lots of diversity. Now. Because there are lots of people who are looking at all the new movements and all the new actions taken to give empowerment to women and other people, how do you think that, mm, oh my gosh, <laughs> do you think that web comics can be somehow more represent, re representative than more legitimate published comics? Totally. I, I think um, with web comics, you're writing towards a, a very specific audience. You, you don't have to. You don't have to 
uh, sort of try and make many, many, many people happy. You can make very, you know, the people that you want to make happy, you can make happy. Um, and so I think there's a lot of opportunity to be a lot more representative, both in terms of gender and body types and ethnicities and perspectives and the whole nine yards. So yeah, I think you're, you're right on track there. I think the most um, social change starts at the fringes, where the, 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 the people on the fringes, they, they start a movement and it becomes popular. And I think the people on the edges of society are the ones that uh, see the future before the mass does. So I think that the smaller businesses and the smaller web comics are the ones that are going to be the ones that really help. I know from going to Jose Comic Con Seattle, which is heavily based for web comics, a lot of my friends enjoy going there. And web comics are such a huge following, and they're fantastic. And seeing that it's becoming almost I don't want to say more popular than the mainstream, but it kind of is. It's it's growing in such a way that it's almost more known to know about web comics than some superheroes that are in bigger comics. And I feel like seeing that there's a lot of women and there's a lot of different diversity in the web comics is fantastic to see that's becoming so popular. So. We're a couple minutes. Another question? Can we take another question? Let's grab one from that side. One on the, on the right, please. Yes. One of the guys, one of you. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. You go. You go. That's right. Yes, uh, right. Rock, paper, scissors. Um, this is going more to the creation, but also the influence department. A few of the fan communities I was part of, um, there was always this mentality of roll over, accept it, take it for what it is. Now that women are more involved in the fandom, you see there's a lot more influence in. Uh, creative products, uh, not just relating to comics, but to TV, to cinema, all those ones. Do you see it, that the influence coming from women is growing at, and um, having much more of an impact? Yeah, um, absolutely. We see women more and more better represented every year, and we see them as more of a creative influence. We have um, more women going back over here, more women in comics than ever before. Women um, are collaborating and communicating with the men in the community and creating really great joint efforts. And the research and statistics just are <coughs> so plentiful, but absolutely it goes towards everything you say that um, the creativity in the community is just growing. Yeah, for me, my, my area comes from definitely the cosplay and the sewing community. Um, seeing guys and girls collaborate non-stop on stuff is amazing. And guys, you know, getting really creative and then helping women be like, oh yeah, actually this, or seeking out women's help. I know a lot of guys that go to girls going, help me, and they're not ashamed to say like, I love this, but I want to do this, and can you help me, and like, different stuff like this, you know, on both sides. So I feel like the creativity of women is very much awesome. Yeah. We have one minute left. What about a quick question from somebody? Um, Quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> by the way, thanks for doing the panel. It's exactly what I needed to hear. So, um, my question is: Do you have any tips for gaining confidence in your fandom? Yeah, I would say um, definitely. This is going to sound really cheesy, but take a moment when you're enjoying your content and just stop. You know, midway through an episode, midway through sewing something. Just right in the middle of enjoying your fandom and be very reflective and very conscious of exactly what it is that you're feeling. Because I'm sure that when you're enjoying something, you're your best self. And it's when you're showing what you love. So I would say, take a moment and remember that feeling. And the more you do it, the more conscious you'll become of it. And the more conscious you are, the easier it will be to bring it with you. And it's a process. I'm not going to say that it's the easiest process, but it's certainly the most rewarding one. Good. Well, we've hit our 2.15. I, I wish we could have taken everyone's questions. Perhaps you can uh, contact or get the ladies outside. I'm sure now uh, the uh, organizers will like us to clear out the room after we're done. But thank you for coming. Thank you for your questions. And great job, ladies. Adams. Because <laughs> if you want an empowerment little web story to watch, 
Watch out Wednesday. Because that tells you everything right there.